Well, 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 we have finally got to the long-awaited final vows. And this actually is in two parts. So we got part one with Married at First Sight UK season seven, episode number 27. Welcome you guys to Romance Review TV with Lady T. Got another recap for you guys. And Hey, you know, I was wondering what we were going to see. We are down to five couples and we only going to see, well, two and a half because one left us with a, quit, a cliffhanger. So before we do this, take a second and make sure that you're subscribed to the channel to receive all updates. And please don't forget to like and share. So the first couple we're going to talk about in this part one uh, final vows episode is April and George. So we know there's a lot of controversy circulating around George at this time. And a lot of the fans weren't happy that um, Channel 4 actually continue airing this couple. But it was just so interesting, and I'm just going to speak to what was on screen because I, I'm first of all, I'm not even in the same country, but I don't know everything that's going on behind the scenes with this situation. But with what we saw on camera this season with this uh, particular couple, they actually were attracted to each other. There was a little hiccup about him having four kids when they met on the wedding day and it seemed like april had gotten past this now there, of course there were a lot of trust issues and commitment issues trust issues on his side commitment issues on her side but throughout this process from what was played out on camera it looked like they had actually worked through these things honestly if it wasn't for all this controversy that's circulating around george they were a couple that went through some strides and actually came out on the end stronger from the way it looked. Now, I do find it interesting with the mom conversation because they all left in their separate spaces before the vows. Mom said it, it's a you problem. So obviously, mom knows she's been around him, knows what his, you know, his issues are and the things that he's going through. But now we're finally at the actual vow what they're going to say and listen i gotta say this married at first sight uk and australia you guys i gotta give you props for these venues for the scenery the different location shots the music i mean they don't have they don't come close well u.s version don't come close to the way that they do this and it's so private and it's so intimate when they do their final vows. Now, I know over here in the U.S., the marriages are actually legal. I know over there and in the Australia version, it is different. But I, I mean, man, it's a beautiful scenery with all of these, even the wedding venues. Anyway, back to April and George. The two of them, they talked about their ups and downs with their commitment issues, with their trust issues. They actually missed not being around each other for the time that they were away to make their decisions on whether or not to continue uh, their relationship at this point. And throughout everything that they had to say, it ultimately culminated into the fact that they both said, yes, they wanted to go on this journey together. This actually on screen was a beautiful moment. Unfortunately, I can't get rid of what's going on around George right now. But I mean, gosh, if you know, that wasn't the issue. I mean, honestly, these two, the way that this was set up on screen, who knows if this was all editing and propped up. But they actually had a beautiful scene together. All of them so far. I haven't seen, of course, Whitney and Matt and Shanita and Jordan yet. But they ultimately said yes, that they were choosing to stay together and they renewed their vows and decided to stay a couple, both April and George. And we got to stay tuned to see what, what happens. At this point, from what I know, April has now uh, left George and um, she's actually going through counseling right now. So hopefully, you know, I wish the best for everybody involved. So next up is Jenna and Zoe. So these two hit it off from the start. They were both happy with what the um, 
you know, the whole project or the experiment had brought these two together. Only thing is they had to work through a lot throughout their process in regards to, um, first of all, the lifestyles. I know I've said this repeatedly. I know it kind of sounds redundant, but, you know, her being mean and Jenna being vegan, um, Zoe, you know, being a meat eater, look like they got past that early in the season. The next issue, of course, was living arrangements because they don't live close. I think they're about maybe two, three hours away from each other. So how are they going to work that out? And then when they had the homestays, the family brought up the conversation of children. And Jenna really don't want to have kids. And I think Zoe want children so somewhere along the way even though that was a topic of conversation within the last couple episodes i'm assuming that they are probably going to work through this and you know i mean obviously once they had the conversations with their families when they were back you know home given some time to think about what they're going to say at the vow renewal it was a lot but now we're at the vow renewal again beautiful venue with this bridge and how they decorated it everybody looks absolutely gorgeous i forgot to say april's dress was a one is she was absolutely beautiful same thing with um jenna and actually too with uh george and of course zoe everybody looks so so good and um it was now their turn to you know decide what they were choosing to do because they got a lot of consider even though they got a lot of connections in a few of their core values the other thing is how and where to live and children is a big one so hopefully um and sometimes that can be a deal breaker so hopefully you know they figure that portion of the relationship out so now they both give their vows and ultimately um jenna first started off and she actually said that she want to continue in the process post experiment with zoe zoe's turn she brought up everything that they've went through as well and she said yes she wants to go post experiment with jenna so they both said yes and they're going to continue their relationship after the experiment and they have officially renewed their vows and they look very happy both zoa and jenna and finally we got sophie and jonathan so this particular couple started out strong they were like my number two couple up there with shanita and jordan and it looks like it was disrupted because they still had the issues about his lifestyle versus her lifestyle, but it looked like they were working through that. When they came amongst the other couples, it got real sticky. Now, one thing that was the biggest uh, point with this particular couple this season was Jonathan's comments and him being straightforward stating what his preferences is and i did a couple videos because mitch from married at first sight us and of course jordan uh jonathan from married at first sight uk they both expressed this season their preferences and a lot of times people have issue with preferences especially when men have preferences now of course women are empowered to speak preferences but um, one of the biggest things is this horse legs comment and weight gain and things like that. And, you know, it, it sparked a frenzy when it came to that. I mean, he had he had looked past the whole thing with trying to put himself in the position to be successful because that was one of uh, Sophie's dad's concern, whether or not he'll be able to provide and be that provider for her. So now it's finally time for their vow renewal. And again, they were in a salt cave and I've seen them popping up over in over here in the U.S. Um, actually, I know some people of uh, friends of mine and family members that actually did the salt cave, but they actually had their vows in a salt cave. And I thought that was extremely creative. It was very intimate. It was very private. So if Sophie looked absolutely beautiful. Jonathan is extremely handsome today. And they started off 
of course, with all smiles. And Sophie came in and she gave, you know, her short sweet and to the point speech she really didn't go through the ups and the downs and stuff she was like you know what we've been through a lot but you know what i want to continue the process with you after the experiment is over so she made her point known and she didn't cut any corners with it however I don't know if this was an editing thing because a lot of his friends came on Instagram and say, hey, he's a nice guy. The way that the show had him edited, it's not who he is. And so she put her intentions known out there. It was his turn. And with the conversations that we saw on TV, he don't know if he has a spark. And I don't know if I'm interested. I'm hoping these two work it out. They left us with a cliffhanger, so we really did not get Jonathan's answer, which we'll see in part two, along with Whitney and Matt and Shanita and Jordan. But I'm really hoping that these two actually figure it out and stay together because I really, truly think they're a good couple. They got to stop letting outside influences affect their relationship. So we'll have to stay tuned to see how it all pans out. Okay, so let's get the conversation started down in the comment section. What did you think about our final vows in this particular episode, part one, with April and George? And I know there's a lot of controversy around them, and a lot of fans aren't happy about this one. Um, what do you think about Jenna and Zoe? Do you think they're going to make it for the long haul? And then, of course, what do you think Jonathan's decision is going to be um, after this whole cliffhanger from part one? Because we already know what Sophie decided to do. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you in the next one. Bye.